Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about proof by induction. So when you want to prove something using inductive theorem, how you are going to proceed it and some examples for induction. I'll share my screen. So proof by induction is a place where uh, we, it has a three steps. It is a three step process. One is a basic step. So basic step is one where we are going to take only the minimal input to the system. So we are going to say, check for the uh, limited set, like what is the minimum possible input that can be given to the system as an uh, input. And we are going to verify that, verify what is uh, to be proven as correct or not. And then we have an inductive hypothesis step. Hypothesis step is like we have to assume that what is the limit given to it. Like when I want to prove something till n value, till n value, your condition is satisfied. Basic step is if my input ranges from 1 to n, Basic step is to check whether the given expression is proved uh, is correct till one, and uh, hypothesis is till n your given expression works. Like this is an assumption, and with this assumption, the third step is inductive step. So inductive step is we have to check for n plus one criteria, the next level of it. Okay, so this is called proof by induction. In order to understand this perfect, I'll take one example. So the first example I'm going to take here is a known, well-known mathematical expression that is summation i is equal to 1 to n i square equal to n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1. 2n plus 1. So this is the exp uh, divided by 6. So this is an equation and in this equation you're going to prove by for induction method. Okay, so here the first step is basic step. What is the basic step here? What will be the minimal input that can be given to this place? Okay, in this expression, the minimum input is when I value, when n value equal to 1, that is the minimum input. So that is going to be your basic step, that is n is equal to 1. So we are going to apply n value as n, or 1 in both this left hand side and right hand side. So what happens here? This side, the value was summation i is equal to 1 to n value is 1 i square. So what does this mean here? So this is sum of squares of n numbers and here the value is 1. So that is equal to 1 square. So here we are going to just check for 1 square and what is the value of 1 square? It is 1. So in this side, your result for basic step is 1. And what happened to the remaining side? It is n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 by 6. When you apply n value as 1, it is 1 into 1 plus 1 is 2 and 2n is 2 plus 1 divided by 6. That is 2 into 3 by 6. The result is 1. So when the for the basic step, both your left hand side and right hand side tends to 1. Okay, so it means that for the basic step, your algorithm works paka. Okay, so the next step is inductive hypothesis step. Hypothesis step is where like we will be assuming the value, the given formula works till n. Okay, so here we are going to take that assumption that that is your hypothesis place where till n the expression works. That is i is equal to 1 to n i square equal to n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1, the whole divided by 6. So this expression works till work n. So this is the hypothesis that we are going to consider. And with this hypothesis, we are trying to prove that this actually works for, we have to verify. We have to verify whether it is working for n plus 1 criteria. So that is called your hypo improved by induction method. Now we have to check n plus 1 criteria. So in both the criteria, like both in this left-hand side and right-hand side, wherever you have n, we have to apply n plus 1. So first we'll consider this left-hand side, that is summation i is equal to 1 to n i square. So instead of n, we are going to consider it as n plus 1 criteria. So what is the meaning of this? This actually means like it is sum of square of all number that is one one square plus two square plus till n square plus n plus one square. So that is the meaning of it, right? 
So for each i value equal to one to n plus one, you are going to make the sum of square of all the elements. So what will be the result of it? So here, uh, according to our analysis, like this one square till n square can be written as summation of i is equal to one to n i square plus n plus one the whole square. Just we are going to remove the last term alone out. Now. According to the second step, that is hypothesis step, we are we have an assumption that the given formula is correct at until this criteria. Until this place, your formula works better. So now what we have to do, we have to take like instead of this i is equal to one to n i square, we can apply n into n plus one into two n plus one whole divided by six plus n plus 1 the whole square this is your normal mathematical expression so now you can uh, take the common denominator like when you want to take a common denominator this term remains as it is n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 and here you have to multiply by 6 both upper and down for getting your common denominator when you want to get common denominator 6 here you have to proceed it now this is your normal algebraic expression you can cross multiply all those values so we'll be having, when I just put this inside, it is n square plus n into 2n plus 1. And here it will be 6 into n square plus 2n plus 1. It is a plus b the whole square, right? Divided by 6. Again, n square like you have to cross multiply this, right? n square into 2n, it is 2n cube plus n square plus 2n square plus n, right? I'm just going to cross multiply. n into 2n is n cube, 2n cube and n square and n into 2n is 2n square n plus 6n square plus uh, 12n plus 1 whole divided by 6. Now, when you just take the common n cube term, you just have only 1n cube. And when you are focusing on n square, it is n 1 plus 2n square plus 6n. So it is 6, 7, 8, 9. 9n square plus n term. Here you have 12n and uh, 1n. It is 13n. And it is plus 6. See, when you are cross multiplying, you should not miss out this term. Plus 6 whole divided by 6. So this is the final expression that we have derived by taking your left-hand side. Now, similarly, we'll consider the right-hand side and we just complete the process. So we'll take this value of n into n plus 1, 2n plus 1 divided by 6. Okay, so this is next category. Now, cross multiply this. You will get n square plus n. No, no. So in this term, uh, we are going to apply wherever you have n, you have to apply it as n plus 1, right? So we have to go it in the next level, right? So in this place, wherever you have n, apply it as n plus 1. So n plus 1 into n plus 1 plus 1 into 2 into n plus 1 plus 1. Whole divided by 6. Okay. So here this is equal to n plus 1 into n plus 2 into 2n plus 2 plus 1. Whole divided by 6. Okay, that is equal to, we just cross multiply, it is n square plus 2n plus n plus 2 into 2n plus 3 whole divided by 6 and that is equal to n square plus 3n plus 2 multiplied by 2n plus 3 whole divided by 6 equal to Cross multiply, it is 2n cube plus 3n square plus 
three n into two n, three two are six. Six n square plus three three are nine. Nine n plus two two four n plus six. Sorry. Plus six, whole divided by six, and what is the final result? It is two n cube plus n square term. It is nine n square plus four n dot. It is thirteen n plus six, whole divided by six. Okay, it is same, right? In both the category, it is same. So this is how we prove something using proof by induction. Okay, thank you.